Hello viewers, I am Will Keith and I'm back after a long break for making videos. The reason behind this gap is that I moved uh, about a month ago and I could have made videos before but I've just been a lazy jackass. But anyway, I moved down south now. I'm living in southern Jersey and close to the shore as you can see from this backdrop behind me here. Um, so I'm going to be making more videos now, but the thing is I live in an apartment complex. So I can't exactly go out in my backyard and start swinging swords. So I got to go around and find secluded places where I can make my videos. Now, the place I'm at now is you've got this big, empty walkway full of nothing. So, I got a good amount of privacy here and I can film. I don't want to cut anything here because I got the water behind me. I don't want to risk accidentally knocking bottles into it. But what I have today doesn't cut anything anyway. I got a collapsible baton. This is a uh, Schrader. Now, before people even consider looking for this, I do not recommend buying this specific one or any Schrader baton. The steel isn't heat treated. I have this because I'm poor and I might be a hobo, but the ones you want to get are Smith & Wesson or ASP. Those are the good ones. ASP batons are what's used by most uh, police forces around America. Smith & Wesson, though, they make good civilian ones. Like this, it sticks open good. If you, um, if you swing it hard enough, it stays open. The way you're supposed to collapse these is by sticking them into the ground like that. And the thing, another thing with the... Uh, Schrader is if you don't unless you swing it really really hard it stays loose so if I point it up like this and wiggle it it will slide in like so and that's not good if you wanted to get it to stay out really solidly or nothing other than hitting it against the ground you got to swing it downwards really hard and that keeps it open real good so this one is uh, 21 inches they sell them between 12 inches and 26 inches I got 21 because it's a uh, good uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I really have no idea, but um, it's a good difference between medium. It's a good medium between expanded length and collapsed length because the uh, 26 inch ones are about this long collapsed. And I mean, this can't go in a pocket, but this, it can really easily go into a uh, coat pocket like the one I have now, and it can even fit into most pants pockets without sticking out of the side of it. So 21 inch is my recommended length. I mean, if you're going to be using it for only home defense and not be carrying it around, you can go with 26. We also have ones that have three expanding segments rather than two. And I have one of those at home, but it's kind of falling apart. i got to do some repairs on it. That one, it's this length collapsed, but it expands to 26 inches. And so that one's really good, but it's even lower quality than this one, i got to say. Eventually, when I have extra money, I'm going to be buying a high-quality Smith & Wesson one. And the, the, the difference between heat-treated steel and non-heat-treated on this, if you know the YouTube channel, Zombie Go Boom, I'm sure most of you do. If not, go check it out. It's a great channel. But they do a test involving the expandable batons where they bash a ballistics gel dummy with it. It's a really good human analog. has same density of human bone, skin, all that. And they use a Smith & Wesson heat-treated baton and a Schrader non-heat-treated one, which is probably this exact one I have now. And the non-heat-treated one, this one, it bends. The tip, it bends after like the second hit on the, the, uh, the uh, dummy skull. The heat-treated one, the Smith & Wesson, it doesn't bend one bit. It stays absolutely solid throughout the whole thing. I mean, it didn't break. It didn't go flying off. It's still an effective weapon. It's just not as strong as heat treated steel so i highly recommend if you're going to buy one of these spring for the heat treated steel smith and western asp uh, another thing about this about the whole general design of it I and mean, go back through all of human history and even before that monkey history the first ever melee weapon used is a stick and that it's so simple you pick up a thing which is blunt and you smack an enemy with it that's how it works and the simplicity of that design is being used today by police forces all over the world, and I love that. I mean, it, 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 there's no blade, it doesn't shock people, it's not a stun baton, you know? It's just absolutely... I, I, I love that, that the simplest weapon ever is what's being used by law enforcers today. I mean, it's really... I mean, it makes sense when you think about it, but I still think that's awesome. So, collapsible batons, it's a good thing to have. I mean, in New Jersey, they're not exactly what I'll consider legal, but I managed to get my hands on one anyway, and I'm carrying it around, and I don't really give a shit. But it's legal in most states, only the uh, northeast is where people are a little bit pissy about them. 
but look, look what the laws are. Get one if you can. Get one if you can't even. I don't care. It's your life. Um, so I guess that's the end of this video. And you're, you're going to be seeing a lot from me now in cool locations like this. I'm going to be filming in forests, on beaches. I'm going to be here a lot. The next step is to find some place that's secluded enough where I can bring swords and cut stuff. Because I can't do that here because of the water. So i got to find a cool place so I can do that. Alright, so now is really the end of this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. End it.